again. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. We're so excited that you took the time out of your day to join us uh, on this broadcast. We are going to be sharing one of the most amazing books with you that will change your life. It's called The Awe of God by John Bevere. And for the next few moments, we're going to be sharing some dialogue, having some dialogue about the book and sharing some inspirational things that would will really help change your life because this book has truly changed my life. And today I have a few friends that are going to be joining me. I'm going to have them introduce themselves uh, and you will truly be blessed. We're, uh, pe people are going to be watching all throughout the country from Maryland to Houston. Uh, so today, I, to belabor any time, I want to turn it over and have our guests introduce ourselves. I want to begin, amen, with my good friend, uh, Dave uh, Fiera, amen, all the way out in Tampa, Florida. Dave, if you'll take a moment, introduce yourself, amen, uh, and share your heart. Greetings, everybody. My name is David Ferreira. Um, I'm coming live from Tampa, Florida, and I'm just honored to be here with you as we uh, really dialogue about this this uh, tremendous work. Uh, I'm honored to, to be a part of this. Bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dave, for taking the time out of your schedule to uh, be a part. Also, way out in Houston, Texas, we have my good friends, Brother Dwayne and Sister Tifa. If you don't know, they join us every single Sunday for our online ministry. If you're watching now and you don't have a, a place to fellowship on Sundays, and you want to join us virtually, send us the inbox as well. Uh, but, but Brother Dwayne and Sister Tifa, if you could take a moment now and just greet everyone. Um, Latifa, Dwayne, like you said, we're in Houston, Texas, and we're so blessed to, that you know Brother Dave has introduced this book to us because it really has blessed our lives. I'm really yeah. excited. I feel like a new person. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm just amazed at how much I, stuff I thought I knew. I didn't really know as much as I thought I knew after reading this book. It's just things you don't think about. And like, like the people say, put respect on Jesus' name and like respect across the board. That's what I got. Just the utmost respect in every area when we come in, you know, doing anything for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love what you said. Put some respect on Jesus' name. I love that. I'm going to get a T-shirt to say put some respect. <laughs> in Jesus name. Amen. Now let's go way across to the East Coast. Amen. We got Sister <laughs> Kelly. Oh my goodness, Sister Kelly. If you could take a moment and greet everyone. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Kelly Gray and I am from Calvert County. I live in Lusby, Maryland, and I'm so happy to be a part of this as well. This book has been so awesome. It's took us through so much stuff. It's helped me to get closer to God. And I just can't brag enough about the book. I love the way the book reads as well. It's a it's an easy read. The chapters are short. And at the end, it gives us a part to make it personal. I have recommended this book to a couple people and it's it's on the way to them. So I just thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And listen, we have the one and the only world renowned. Amen. Elder Trey Lancaster Smith is on the line. Elder Trey, if you'll take a moment and greet everyone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, it's a blessing to watch everyone grow and to grow together and to connect on Sundays and going through the journey of reading this book and watching um the revelation and the maturity among us as a group um, and each and every person discuss how that week's chapter affected their lives and how it's changing them going forward. That's really what the word of God is supposed to do. And we have to make sure when we're in our current culture um, that we're not uh, acclimating to the culture so much that we're no longer reflecting God's glory. So uh, this book really sticks out as it challenges you to think differently then maybe the mass culture does think. Amen. 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 We're so excited. And again, I'm Pastor Michael P. Barber here in the great city of Huntsville, Alabama. I'm excited to see what God is going to do tonight on behalf of my wife and my daughter. I love y'all to life. And let's get into it tonight. This book is called The Awe of God by John Bevere. And when I say it's life-changing, it's life-changing. I want to read something to you of the definition of 
fear, the definition of fear. It is an unpleasant emotion uh, caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Uh, and I do believe that this is kind of an oxymoron, if, if you will, how uh, we hear the word fear and sometimes we uh, can't correlate that with the kingdom of God. Scripture declares in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, we understand that there's a healthy fear and there's an unhealthy fear. And I do believe that uh, uh, this book helps us to correlate the two into one, bringing a reverence to God. Uh, Dave, if you can take a moment to elaborate to everyone that's watching uh, how uh, uh, John Bevere takes uh, a, a healthy fear, an unhealthy fear, and correlates them into one to give us a great understanding so that we have a true revelation of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You know, um, thank you, uh, Pastor Mike. I um, One of the things that I wanted to extrapolate, I know that everyone's read the book, but, and there's different points that I believe that speak you know, volumes to to each of us that, that read it. I know that chapter two uh, highlighted where he got the revelation, but then got the correction um, mm -hmm. and had to deal with that. And then chapters four and five had the miraculous take place in Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the the turning point for me, the, the, the block that hit me between the eyes was in chapter 17. And I'm just going to recite a little bit of it and then share. He, he's meeting in prison with a tele-evangelist who, you know, was serving a sentence of 45 years. And it says, after 20 or so minutes of listening, I felt comfortable enough to ask some questions. I started with the biggest one I could think of. When did you fall out of love with Jesus? Wow. I asked this question because earlier in his ministry, his love for Jesus radiated for him. His fire and passion were evident to all who heard him. I wanted to know when his love grew cold and further, what caused it? Staring into my eyes with great sincerity, he said, I didn't fall out of love with Jesus. I was shocked and a little angered by his comment. How dare he say this? I thought, I immediately fired back, what are you talking about? You committed adultery seven years before you were prosecuted for the mail fraud that ultimately put you in this penitentiary. How can you tell me you love Jesus those seven years without breaking eye contact? He calmly said, John, I love Jesus the entire time. My bewilderment was obvious. He paused and addressed it. John, I didn't fear God. He paused again, then more fully elaborated. I love Jesus, but I didn't fear God. Mm -hmm. I was stunned speechless and quite frankly, was in awe of what had just been stated. There was silence for a good 15 seconds. My mind processing the entire time. Then he made the statement that still reverberates through my being. John, there are millions of Americans just like me. They love Jesus, but they don't fear God. Mm. I share that with you because as, as Elder Trey was, was touching on in regard to us being so saturated by culture, there are so many people that have been fooled and it, it, we, we treat God as a casual and as a common um, thing where, all right, I'm going to church, I'm going through the motions, but it's so important that we do not lose our reverence for the true and living God whom we should desire to have an encounter with. And so um, it, it's important to understand that when we, we talk about the fear of God, we're not talking about being afraid of God. We're talking about the importance of having a reverence and 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 a respect and understanding authority and, a, and the importance of walking in obedience and taking his word and applying it to our lives. And, the, you know, there, there's another 
highlight in there that partial obedience is not obedience. Mm -hmm. Like we can, or if we delay and there's a hesitancy to our obedience, is it truly obedience? So those things just the, the, the richness and the understanding that there are so many people. And even if I look at myself before I partook of this book, did I truly go into a place of worship and a place of prayer with the ultimate reverence for the true and living God desiring to be in his presence and everything else paling in comparison to those things. And so we have to be mindful and, mm -hmm. and, and careful not to become common and, and cause him to be common because as this was illustrated in the book and what it was that I shared that we, we, we want to say that we love Jesus, mm -hmm. wow. but we don't fear God. Wow. Jesus and God are one. And so what we've tried to do as a culture is separate the two. Like, oh, I love Jesus. So I'm a Christian. I'm a Christ follower, but we we've lost the true, um, reverence for who our holy king uh truly is and and we those that have partaken of this book there's a there's a difference that we've experienced and we can no longer um be fooled into thinking that you know it's just a common thing to to be a believer i went to church i got saved and and i'm going through the motions and this culture will try to cause us to want to feel good and want to be motivated and want to be inspired. But there's an, there's a, an important balance that we're not only encouraged. I mean, encouragement is important, but at the same time, it's also important that we're in right relationship, that we're in right standing, and it, it may be necessary to be corrected or to be rebuked, to be in proper alignment, because I know that that's when I'm the most effective in my life is when I'm in proper alignment with God and my house is in order and I'm in right relationship with him. Um, and we all feel it when we get off, you know, and it, and, and, and it's, you know, it's important to know that it's a slow fade. It doesn't happen, you know, immediately. It happens one compromise to another compromise to another compromise. And we find ourselves veering off of the original path when we had the passion, the zeal, and the ultimate reverence for who our Lord truly is. Amen. I, I want to piggyback off of what Dave said there. Uh, that I thought that was so powerful. He loved God, but did not fear him. And as Dave was saying those words from the book, I began to write this down. Um, um, he loved God, but didn't fear him, which equals no conviction and no growth. In other words, you can love God, but not grow in Christ. It's uh, ha having a healthy fear, uh, healthy, healthy reverence of God is what brings conviction into our life. And uh, I want to transition to Elder Trey uh, from that point there, because I believe this, that can lead us greatly into Sister Tifa and Brother Dwayne and Sister Kelly. Uh, uh, Elder Trey, can you elaborate on that, please? Um, actually, right before I came and, and joined this meeting, we came from a meet and greet with Elijah's new basketball, my son's new basketball coach. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said in that meeting was, <clears throat> if you can't critique yourself, if you don't critique yourself, you cheat yourself. Mm -hmm. And when we list, read this book and we think about how you should, the perspective of the author and how you should respect God and how you should behave in church and how you should think. And it's so different from our current culture. We should obviously be uh, critiquing ourselves and self-assessing ourselves. Say, Am I respecting God? Am I showing God the love and the respect that he deserves since he's been so good to me? Does he expect more of me? And, and also, am I analyzing myself? Am I, am I laying myself on the altar, putting myself on the potter's wheel and allowing him to mold me and make me into the vessel that he wants me to be? 
I, I want to grow in God. I want to grow in God because I want to please him and I want to receive all the blessings that he has for me. And you cannot receive all the blessings that God has for you. You, you cannot become the best you that you can be, the best you that God wants you to be if we don't listen and we allow the scripture to continue to prune us and to um and we're receptive of that and we are as brother dave touched on a little bit as well we are living in a culture that lacks submission we are living in a culture that lacks humility and it is and and you can see it in the young people but you can see it in the in the older generations too they don't want to submit to their uh pastors they don't want to submit to um the board of god they don't want to submit to their uh superiors at work and you know we are really um cheating ourselves but also we ought to have the fear of god if we're not willing to submit ourselves to the king of kings and lord of lords because all will bow that's good and elder trey as elder trey was talking there the two words that came to my mind were behavior and character behavior and character how many of us desire to to uh uh, answer the call of God in our life. Many of us are waiting on the timing of God and when God's going to do uh, such and such in our life. Uh, but understanding that, that when, when we have a reverence or fear of God, uh, we're in his presence, which means that it changes our behavior and then our character changes. In other words, God cannot elevate you until your behavior is correct and your character is in line. So, so in other words, the blessing that I got from uh, this book lined up with what Dave and, and, and Trey had just said is it helped change my behavior, it helped change my character to get in line with the will of God. Amen. I, I, I want to press forward to uh, uh, go way out in Houston, Texas. Amen. Uh, uh, to uh, Sister Tifa and Brother Dwayne. Uh, they're growing in Christ. They've been with us now for, I think, about two years, about two years now or, or more. Uh, than that, and I've watched them grow. And uh, how have you grown uh, from reading the Word of God in in, in, in this book, uh, Brother Dwayne and Sister Tifa? There we go. Okay, well, I'll go first on that one. I would say it's given me, like I said, just giving me a better understanding, like I said, because I, when I read the Bible, of course, you know the Bible stories, you know certain stories in the Bible. When I read this book, it kind of like give me a, like an extra sense of really what's going on, I get a better understanding, like for one, one of the things that stuck out to me, like the whole book is, is like, it's, it's working on me. But I would say like one of the first ones is like, you're talking about King Solomon, like how he was blessed and everything. He was favored, but in the end he got, like I say, how do people say too? He got comfortable, he got too comfortable. Like he just, he became cynical. And like I said, sometimes I try to look, I look at myself. I'm like, Lord has done so much for me. Like I said, I know I wouldn't be here without him. It's like, I tell my wife that like, I don't want to ever feel like I, you know, get the big head. I just, you know, I just want to, you know, do, do what's right and, you know, stay within God's will. I don't want to, you know, try experiment on, experiment on my own or anything like that. I just, you know, want to stay in his will and pray that he continue, you know, to deal with me, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, just, you know, like I said, I want him to come live in me, you know, make me a better person. I know a lot of stuff I have to work on as well. So. Amen. Amen. And for me, I... I feel like, like I said, I feel like a new person. I keep saying that because my eyes have been open, you know, in a sense. When you think, you know, you think, oh, I'm a good person. I help people. I talk to God. I pray. You know, you think, oh, I'm a, I'm a good Christian. I, I don't, I don't steal. I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't hurt anyone. You're a good Christian. But it's really opened my eyes to what I was keep, what I was taking from the Lord, you know, like, I, I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that I was living, the life I was living was like a little irreverent to God, I guess, mm -hmm. myself, right? I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I was kind of hiding. I didn't want to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, so it was like, sometimes I wouldn't pray like at work over my food or uh, I, at, as I had mentioned before, I, when I hear somebody talking about how they're having a bad day and I want to say like, do you know God? I wouldn't because I didn't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable or, you know, I don't want to be that crazy religious lady, you know, that's always talking about God. And I, and I feel so bad because I'm like, God has done so much for me. He's done so much in our lives and he loves us so much. And I couldn't even, you know, I can't even 
you know, I didn't feel like I should even just mention God. I shouldn't be thankful for my food that I have in front of me because of the people that are around me. So that that's what got me the most. Um, just that I, I felt like I was living a good Christian life. And the book made me realize there's so much more I could do. There's mm -hmm. so much more I could do. There's so I could I could be closer to God, which is like so intriguing. Like I felt like I was so close to God, but to know that there I could do more and 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 even and be even closer to God, or I could show God, God his glory and honor even more. And it's so simple. It's so simple. I want to tell people. I want to talk to people and tell people how I feel about God and how how God has changed my life, how he's kept me through so many different situations. And it's not that hard of a thing to do. Like just, you know, just speak, speak your mind, like say what you feel. And that's, that's really what captured me the most. Like I, I didn't know what a, a holy, you know, what a holy fear was, you know, when you guys brought this to us, I, I, I was almost like a little afraid. Like I was like, well, I don't, I don't want to fear God. I love God. You know, that's what I was thinking. And as I like, as I real as I read the book, I realized how important it is, it, how, how important it is to fear God. And I realized that, like I said, I was being irrelevant, uh, ir uh, irreverent towards God by not by not doing like reading my Bible every day. I kept putting things off. Oh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I didn't read my Bible this morning. I didn't pray. I, I'll do it tomorrow. God will forgive me. I, you know, God forgive me. I'm gonna I'm gonna start Monday. I'm gonna start reading my Bible. You know, you keep doing that. And I didn't realize how that was hurting my relationship with God and my closeness to God. I didn't know. I didn't think about that. And I say sometimes how my my mental stability is dependent on my relationship with God. Like, I don't even know where I would be right now if I didn't have a relationship with God. And that's what makes me so excited about what I know now. Because if I feel this good now, I, can, I, can, I can't imagine how good and how much more, how much, how how much better I'm going to feel once I am more disciplined in, you know, in, in being a Christian and knowing God and loving God and showing God his, rev you know, due reverence and, and honor and glory. So I just, it's, it's exciting. And uh, it, th that's, that's what has touched me the most. <laughs> Amen. I want you, once uh, this is out in the world, sees this, Sister Tifa, I want you to rewind this over and over again. <laughs> And let those words be prophecy to your life. Amen. Let those words be prophecy to your life. The words that I was hearing as, as Brother Dwayne and Sister Steve out in Houston uh, were speaking was, uh, there's a word called unconscious bias. Unconscious bias. Uh, while that word now has become popular in the work sector, um, is it true that we can have unconscious reverence where we we're around God so much uh, where we become irreverent unconsciously and we simply go through the motions, but not knowing that, that, that we have an unconscious lack, uh, lack of reverence for God. I was talking to uh, brother Dave the other day. Um, I was in prayer uh, and a brother came to me and wanted to have a conversation. I, I, I had the minimal conversation with them. But that brother didn't understand that I was in the presence of God. And he had a lack of reverence unconsciously simply because of our relationship. And are we in the generation right now that has an unconscious lack of reverence for God? Uh, I want to go to Sister Kelly, but, but before I come to Sister Kelly, Brother Dave, um, are, are we in a generation that is unconscious to uh, uh, the reverence of God? And then I'm going to come to Sister Kelly. I believe so. I believe that because we have treated it so casually and, and, and church services have become, um, in general, I'm not casting a stone at a ministry in particular, but it, there, there just been some where it's like, all right, you know, can I entertain you? Can I, can mm -hmm. I lift you up? If, if I bring a, a, a message, that is convicting to your soul do i have to worry about whether or not you'll return next week or whether or not you'll tithe or give offerings um so that we can continue to have a building fund or whatever it is that we're financing um you know god when he gives us order and direction 
he he already knows the end from the beginning so all we can do is be you know the best that we can do is to be obedient listen and follow through what it is his command was um, but we as a culture and a society have gotten so watered down with you know what we envision god to be in our daily lives that yes i believe that we have an unconscious uh irreverence that's taking place and uh, like we you know talked offline it's almost like those of us that have received this revelation have been unplugged from the matrix and we can no longer go back to that feeling of a lack of sensitivity we see others that are still going through the motions going through the daily you know the the daily grind that we have the the, the american dream that we're chasing as a society but those of us that have received this is like uh-uh no the better thing the greater thing is to be in his presence the better thing the greater thing the, it his presence outweighs any blessing that Amen. you can desire ask for if if he if he brings his presence all time stops there's mm. nothing that's more important than his presence mm. and until we get that you know get that revelation as a society it's up to us to be on the watchtower praying mm. for for our homes for our communities for our states and for this nation god has woken us up for such a time as this to get you know his people in line so that we do have the proper uh reverence for who he is and the proper fear because it's like like i shared uh in a previous conversation pastor mike you know i didn't realize how often the reference the reference to the fear of the lord was mentioned in scripture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And anything that he he references multiple times, it's it's important. Amen. It's very important for us to have a healthy fear of the Lord, because that's how great and how wonderful, how mighty, how magnificent, how omnipresent, how omnipotent that He truly, truly is. Amen. 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 Listen, Amen. I'm gonna go to to uh, Sister Kelly right now. Uh, uh, but before I go to her, listen, our, our time is running short, but Elder Trey, if you can get in the back of your mind, amen, uh, your response uh, to unconscious irreverence. Uh, then I'm going to go to Sister Kelly, uh, and then uh, at the end of this, Brother Dave, if you can just do a, give me a quick testimony on what happened at the concert um, that I think <laughs> that can truly shed light to this whole conversation. And then uh, Brother Dwayne and Sister Teeth, I'm going to have y'all Pray us out, okay? Amen. Yes, awesome, Amen. awesome. Sister Kelly, all the way in Calvin County, Maryland. Thank you for having me again. Um, like everyone says about the book, you know, the book is just so great. Like, I'm trying to think how to how I want to put it, but I I was doing pretty good, you know, and but I always wondered how could i get back to that place wow. where i was so 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 excited about god so the book has really took me to that place and now i'm super excited super excited about god again because wow. i think that sometimes we may just get comfortable in our relationship with him and we don't give him all the respect that he definitely deserves. So I liked chapter 29. Amen. It was called Where Intimacy Begins. So this chapter Amen. talks about how holy fear grows within us according to our understanding of God's glory. And I didn't necessarily know what holy fear was either, but I'm learning that, you know, a part of holy fear is knowing what pleases God, what displeases him, what his word says, so on and so forth. And having holy fear makes a big 
big amount of difference. So Proverbs 1, 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. And I've learned from this book that, yes, it is the beginning of knowledge. It's opened me up so much more to God. Um, to be intimate also goes both ways. We have to know what pleases God and we have to open up and let God know us. We have to search him out. Like He loves us so much and he chose us but he wants us to, cho to choose him. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray and such so that we're seeking him out. He's not just seeking us out. It goes both ways. In Psalms 139, two through four says, you know, when I sit down or stand up, you mm -hmm. know, my thoughts yeah. even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home, you know everything I do, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it. So I love all of Psalms 139. I really like this here. You know, it says to me that God, God knows us by name. He counts every hair on our heads and he desires to be intimate with him. But we determine the level of our intimacy with him. That's good. That's good. Sister mm -hmm. Kelly, that is so amazing. Um, something that I wrote down as you were writing was reverence restores. Reverence yes. restores your relationship. It reverence does. Reverence restores your power. Reverence restores your anointing. If you want to be restored, find reverence for God. Mm. Find yes. reverence for the Lord. Amen. Listen, Amen. Uh, just quickly, Elder Trey, in, in 90 seconds, if you can, because I know your spirit was burning when uh, you heard that word, unconscious irreverence. Talk to us quickly. You got 90 seconds, Elder Trey. Unconscious <laughs> irreverence. <laughs> I'm going to give you a visual. So, um, you know, my husband's old school when it comes to the kids and respect. But I try to explain that not all these kids were brought up the way we were brought up, you know. So we have a pool party at our house or he sees the other teenagers come over here. All of a sudden there's kids walking around our house with cups and they haven't even introduced themselves to him. He's like, hi, how are you? Who are you? You know, you have a house, you have a cup. Or, you know, you have kids that come over or they walk into the bedroom or they walk into the room. They don't knock at the stand at the door and ask, can I come in or something like that? Or they talk to you, yo, what's up? And all this. And there's no yes, sir. And there's none of this. And 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 I'm like, hey, calm down. You know, they don't know any better. Like, it's not intentional. It may not be intentional disrespect because they don't know. I would say that's unconscious irreverence, right?